Hi everybody, Rob here from Prize Studios and welcome to this first in a set of Fusion 9 tutorials. So in this one I'm going to introduce you to the planar tracking tools. So I've done some kind of corner pinning tutorials for Fusion 8, um, but Fusion 9 makes this a lot easier. Uh, so what I've got here is just a little bit of uh, drone footage and I've just, all I've done is imported it with a loader and I've defined the start and end frames that I want to play with. So I'm looking at frame uh, 1217 to 1775 and having them in the global as well as the render just means that the whole of my timeline on screen here is what I'm actually playing with. So let's just have one quick look through this footage. As you can see, it's just a very simple kind of lift and turn. And what I want to do is uh, some point in this frame I'm going to add just a bit of text uh, maybe like a, a label on a roof or something like that so let's jump in and actually start this so I'm going to go back to my start frame here and first of all let's make some text so I'm just going to press shift and space to bring up the add tool and I'm going to add a text plus which will do for now Okay, I don't want to actually merge those two, so I'm going to take my text, just bung it into my first viewer, and let's just write Fusion 9, and we'll choose something like Impact, just a nice big, fat, heavy font, uh, and I think I might just space the characters out a little bit here, just like so, and for my shading, I'm just going to pick a really bright pink just so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. And I'll just go back to the text and scale this up just so we're making the most of those pixels. Okay, so let's go back to our footage here and I'm going to shift space to bring up that and I'm going to type in planar. Now, as you type any characters that have a tool with those characters in will pop up in the list here. So you can see planar tracker, just gonna hit okay. And that has automatically piped in. Now, if you have tools that aren't piped together and you're not sure which one you want to actually connect it to, which input, uh, there's an easy way. You can either just click and drag and hold down option and let go over your target node, and then you get this menu, or you can right click on the output, and as soon as you let go over the target node, you'll get the same thing. So here, I want to go background because that contains the region I want to track. And the tracker, it's kind of a, a pretty obvious thing really, it kind of works in a, a logical order. Uh, you do the track first and then you choose what you want to do with the track. Um, now, if I click track forward here, uh, it's going to bring up a message saying, uh, hang on a second, you're not actually at frame zero, you better tell me what you want to do. Um, and that's because we're starting at frame 1217. So if we come up to reference time here and click set, make sure that's at 1217. Now we can go through, through and start our tracking. So our tracker, we're just going to use point, that's fine. Perspective is a good kind of general bet. Uh, you have options in here for different things like just translation, if you know your camera's at a set distance from the target to be tracked. Rotation, rotation and scale, and fine, which is all good. Output, background, that's fine. That's all we want to do for this. Um, we'll look at some of the other options maybe in a future tutorial. So let's hit our track forward button, which is this one over here. And here we go. Okay, so, oh, yeah, of course, the most important thing of all. Let's choose an area to actually track. So I'm going to try and put my text on this roof here, which is a slanted roof. All you do is you click and drag in here uh, with your node selected. It doesn't have to be a fancy shape. Uh, you can click and drag on here to have a bezier curve, or you can just click and have a random shape. Now this shape doesn't have to actually match the underlying part of your footage. In fact, doesn't seem to help much at all. So let's go back in and click track forward and you'll see bucket loads of green tracking data. And this is, I've got a fair few frames in here, but this is a pretty solid track already. I can tell this is looking good uh, and it's reasonably quick. If you think of the amount of tracking points, it's actually tracking there. Uh, and the amount of frames it's got to go through. Uh, I think you'll find that's a, a pretty speedy tracker. Okay, so all done and we're ready to go. So you can see what we've got going on here. Let's just go back to the start and you can play that through. Uh, this isn't retracking, this is just gonna play through so you can have a look at your markers and see if they look good. 
which they do. So now what we need to do is actually line up our text. And to do this, I'm just gonna right click its output, hover over the planar tracker tool, let go and corner pin, because that's what I want to do. So my corner pin, I'm going to select my tracker, make sure I'm viewing this in my right hand viewer just by clicking the two key and you can't see it. So what have we done wrong here? Well, actually we've done nothing wrong. We just haven't told our planar tracker what we want to do with it. So I'm gonna go over to corn pin. As soon as I hit this button, you'll see the text appear and it won't be quite white, but it's, you know, it's getting there. So let's come in and just go 200%. And all we need to do is drag the corners of this and put it into a rough position. So I'm gonna just line up and I'm using the kind of lines on that tin roof to just help me out here a little bit just using it as a reference just so I don't warp the text too much really okay so I'm gonna put this in here and try and line it up reasonably well I want my text to sit within that white bar I think that's probably a good place to have it and final tweak just there okay so that's looking all right. It's a bit pink, but uh, that will let us see if our track's any good. So if we go back to our start frame, you can see it's already still there. Press play and that should be stuck solidly. And it really is as simple as that. There's not much more that you need to worry about with the planar tracker. Uh, it's fast, it's really simple to set up uh, and it does create a really good solid track. Uh, now obviously for the purposes of looking a little bit prettier, I'm gonna go back into my text and I'm just gonna to go to the shading and I'll make this a kind of a dirty gray. I'll pick a, a dark color from within my scene. That's that one there maybe. Um, maybe lighten it up just a little bit. Okay, so there we have it. We have some well-tracked footage. It sticks to the roof very well. And of course, you could do the same with anything here. You could do it on the, the roof over here, any of these roofs. You could do it on the floor. Uh, anywhere which is pretty flat will work. Uh, you can get away with doing it. So there's rubbish here. For this shot, the distance that the drone is from the floor, this is effectively all a flat place. So if you wanted to put something in here, you could. Um, but that's, uh, that's it. That's all you need to know about the planar tracker in Fusion 9. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to use the camera tracker, which is almost as easy as this uh, and just as much fun to work with. So see you all again soon. Thanks very much. I've been Rob.